Hello, welcome to the Special Movies Podcast. This is episode 99. My name is Mike Williams, and uh, these are my good friends, Jake Kukowski and Liam McKelvey. Hello. Hey, Mike. Hi. Great to be here. <laughs> friends, I don't know yeah. why they're vicious. But good friends, yeah. We're not making it, we're not making it to Podcast 100. <laughs> Uh, it's a, it's a little bit, a, yeah, a little bit of a step up from whatever I normally say these guys or whatever. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, ninety nine podcasts in. It's about time, isn't it? Um, yeah. So we almost forgot as we were just about to start recording <laughs> that um, Xbox bought Bethesda this week, which is probably the biggest thing that's happened in video games in years. And we almost hit record just now <laughs> without uh, without planning to talk about it. And I guess that's because it was such a, like a bit of exciting news um, over the last week that we were we were talking about it. Yeah. We've already talked about it so much, I guess, mm-hmm. you know, privately. Like, um, So we're, we're going to be doing, spending a lot of time on that in this podcast, uh, but nothing has been uh, planned. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, there's a lot of b- uh, big news for No Man's Sky as well. The uh, latest Origins update is out. We played a bit of that. Um, good emails in the in the inbox, and there's plenty of new games coming out in the coming week uh, for us to look forward to. So it's going to be a packed podcast. Uh, remember, if you like to listen and you want to join in, you can email us at dearspecialmoves at gmail.com. That's dearspecialmoves at gmail.com. Send us an email. We'll uh, read it out, and uh, you can help us put the podcast together that way. And if you're a patron, we've got the bonus podcast coming out every couple of weeks or so. Uh, so remember to check the Patreon feed for the latest bonus podcast as well. Uh, yeah, should we just go straight into the uh, Xbox thing then and just scrap everything else? We, well, not scrap it, but... <laughs> yeah, well, I mean... Put it's on the back burner and let's talk about Xbox and Bethesda for a little Yeah, uh, sure. Little mm-hmm. uh, this was exciting, wasn't it? Yeah, this was a kind of like everyone I know was talking about it in all caps type deal. So it's a good, yeah. you know, it's a good bit of rabble like going on when it got announced. It it felt exciting. So um, yeah, like it's, I think it might be one of the biggest acquisitions ever. Uh, certainly one of the most household name to household name acquisitions. You know, it's like my wife knew enough to give a shit that it was a big deal. Yeah. Whereas if I mentioned fucking, I don't know, even another massive company like 2K, she might not know because she's, you know, not massive into fucking yeah. NBA or whatever. But but the point is that um, I uh, I think that this is a acquisition of like the ages. Like they've got Obsidian and Bethesda together. So I just wanted to get straight out of the gate and just put those two names next to each other again. If we hold them close enough together, maybe there'll be another spark and we can get something special. But I think that... Uh, this is crazy. So um, I just want to say one thing. I don't know if you guys have seen, but somebody actually tweeted um, all of us, I think maybe, but, but it might be, maybe it was just me, but somebody had done all the math and sent all the details yeah. to us um, about the acquisition. So it cost, was it $7.5 billion? Mm-hmm. And it works out that they've got 15 million monthly users of Game Pass. And so... When you put that together, how much they pay a month times 15 million, it's only going to take them up if they get if an, an Xbox Game Pass is growing and growing and growing. And with the Series X, it's going to continue to grow. But assuming that not a single user signs up again or drops off between now and the time it takes for them to pay that off, it will only take 34 months. So just short of three years for them to make all of that 7.5 billion back just on yeah. Game Pass. Never mind sales, never mind anything else, uh, the, the growth of it, which to me seems, you know, like like going in the red for three years and then coming out of it doesn't seem like a very risky thing for a business to do. 7.5 billion, when you hear it at the face, it's like, oh my God, that's like their budget for the whole console yeah. generation, but clearly not. So mm-hmm. just wanted yeah, to I, bring that up. That's, you know, that's interesting. And it, it definitely kind of... Uh... For me, it, it reminded. It just reminds you how huge Microsoft is as as a company. And uh, you know, so obviously Sony Sony is big, Nintendo's big, but but Microsoft has kind of this um, like Titanic fucking history behind it and stuff that is just yeah. as you know, and, and Bill Gates and it's got like this kind of figurehead of uh, you know financial success and stuff and a really important part of of technology i'm not saying like sony isn't but but you know yeah. microsoft is a real fucking 
juggernaut, really. And and so if they want to, a, but a lot of the talk there was like some rumors and stuff that it was going to be, you know, they were looking at someone like, you know, it could it could be as big as EA or Ubisoft or, or whatever. And then it it's the kind of thing where you think, yeah, okay, that that could be that could be cool. But when's that ever going to happen? And then it fucking has. Like this is. I mean, I know it's not the biggest acquisition in terms of she- like sheer amounts of money. I'm sure there's like ten cent and all that kind of yeah that those those kind of acquisitions where it's about one game or one mobile app or something. And I know that is bigger, but this it, this is just the biggest to my mind that has happened in terms of you know a game you know people like us who play games, people who aren't just like. I don't yeah. think anyone is interested in that kind of like ten cent type of deal where they're yeah, acquiring like, fucking but like backroom acquisitions with, with with not no like yeah front facing exciting things. Like, I, I guess I guess the best way to describe it really is it's like buying Bethesda is only exciting for you know the average person because Bethesda is a name that's synonymous with a lot of famous IPs. So yeah. it's like you you've got like names that people know, like everybody and their mum knows fucking Skyrim. Elder Scrolls maybe not, but like they would know, know the name Skyrim and yeah. Fallout. If you're if you're a PC gamer, you check any list. There's Bethesda titles on there. Um, Doom now, right? I guess. Yeah. Um, but yeah. but but it's like there's huge names attached to this acquisition, yeah. and not just names of games, but names of franchises. And especially, um, I guess I I mean I guess I better just get this out of the way, right? But it's like Bethesda have been kind of pissing people off for the past few years. <laughs> They haven't really put anything out that's blown people away like they used to. Um, you know, uh, I guess the last really, really, really well-received game maybe was Doom, maybe. But the last great, like, great, great game that they made, I think, genuinely, might have been Skyrim, which is nine years old. So, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't, I don't think Fallout 4 does that well, like critically, no. and a lot of people are disappointed. Well, I, th- I think they've got, you know, they've got IP that's, that's, that's done well. They've published stuff that's, that's been yeah, great. Like, like you know, Doom they've published, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, Wolfenstein and, and you know, Doom Eternal did, did, did do well and stuff, yeah. but it wasn't, it, they, I know what you mean, they haven't, they haven't, Bethesda as, you know, you think of Bethesda <laughs> hasn't delivered, like, you know, a Fallout or a, or a, or an Elder Scrolls really that's been a fucking knockout, and it's mainly because because it's that their success is kind of overshadowed by the recent disappointment, which is kind of Fallout seventy six or <clears throat> what have you. So you kind of you you think of that, you think of that as their recent track record as a as a you know yeah. development kind of studio. I guess, yeah, I, I I guess I guess we do know that the Bethesda game studios, which is I guess is the games that we're referring to, we know that there's some in the works. Like there is a new Elder yeah. Scrolls. Yeah in the works, single player Elder Scrolls game. And we know that there's Starfield or for the old head Spaceland, the yeah. it, like um, Fallout in space thing that they've been working on for a very long time now, like um, four or five years since it's been announced. I think it was, I think it's been four years since its announcement, but um, we know that they must be getting closer to completion with that sort of thing. So we basically, what I'm saying is we know that this gen, we're going to get a new Elder Scrolls, and we're going to get a new other game, which is yeah. which are the headliners for yeah. for Bethesda, right? Yeah. So yeah. that that is to me what they are buying. Yeah. So, so and, my mind. And but to give you to to remind people of that kind of scale of just just how big Bethesda is, uh, they've got two timed exclusives coming to PlayStation Five. Mm-hmm. So now Microsoft is going to be, in essence publishing two timed exclusives for PlayStation 5. And in Fair Play, they've said they, they're going to honour that. And the, what were those games, Liam? They were oh, Deathloop. Um, and- Deathloop, which is the, the one by Arcane, who made this honoured, and Ghostwire Tokyo from the Evil Within developers. Yeah. yeah. But so yeah. think of the, that. That's two different... You, that's, you don't think... You, you think Bethesda, you don't think Arcane as such, do you? You don't think mm-hmm. of fucking... The evil within, do you? But they've still they've got yeah. <laughs> that's some that's not, do. <laughs> no no. But I mean I mean if you th- if you think of a Bethesda game, exactly. you think of a first person RPG. But yeah. you, but but they've got all these they publish all these titles. And fucking Zenimax are, are a huge huge company, mm-hmm. and so it's just just trying to underline how how big this is. And um, uh, uh, do, do you think this is going to like um, pan out in terms of exclusives? Like, do you think they're gonna they're gonna go? Actually, we're gonna 
just just publish things on Xbox and PC and, and PlayStation can can never have them or PlayStation can wait or because they just seem quite open minded at uh, Microsoft at the moment. Um, I feel like it could it could go either way, really. Yeah, um, they're cool. They want to be cool. Mm-hmm. You know, he yeah. wears a leather jacket on stage, Phil Spencer. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. um, but but yeah, PlayStation are kind of dickish, I think, with yeah. the Xbox. But but I, I don't know, Liam. You you probably have got more insight than me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know because like Microsoft have been pretty cool with Nintendo lately. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. letting stuff like Ori go to the Switch and stuff, even though it's published by. Xbox Game Studios, whatever they're called. Yeah. I think possibly they might... Because they said something about leaving Bethesda to like be up to their own devices. So I think they might be like a... You know, like Elder Scrolls 6 or whatever. Might come out. Or 7. Is it 6 or 7 now? 6. 6, six. yeah. Elder Scrolls 6. Whenever that comes out, I think they might be like... Yeah, it'll be Xbox, PC, and then maybe like a year later, it might come to PlayStation. Yeah. Because Microsoft aren't a stupid company, and that would be leaving a lot of money on the table if they just completely ignored PlayStation altogether. Because I've already seen like people on Twitter and Reddit, like on the PlayStation subreddit (laughs) and stuff, like proper going mad at the idea that they're not going to be able to play the next Elder Scrolls game on their PS5 and stuff like that. Yeah, you know, they almost feel betrayed by yeah. PlayStation. That it's, which is funny, right? Because it's nothing to do with PlayStation. But but, but that's the mentality a lot of people have, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah. what, if they if they put out a game, harvest all of the great press, you know, a fantastic Xbox exclusive for now, and they get all of that wave one money, all the fear of missing out, all of that wave one bite, and then PlayStation get the scraps. That makes sense, right? There will yeah. be people that. Um, mm. But that, that's that's kind of why I was I was raising it because it's yeah. it's it would it's it seems like you just wouldn't have had that like ten years ago, would you? You wouldn't have had a, a PlayStation owned, you wouldn't have had a Sony owned or an Xbox Microsoft owned studio, you know, m- making games with the intention of eventually releasing it on the other console, would you? They would have they would have just been this is an exclusive, this is an exclusive game on our console. They wouldn't have even said timed. They would have just said it's an exclusive. Yeah, yeah. But then maybe in a year or two, or you know, like the original Mass Effect was a console exclusive for the 360, I think, wasn't it? And then, and then if, you know, th- that. But that series is you never think of that as like a no. as an Xbox series, do you? you but it's no. it's so so it is. It's fucking. It's one of the most interesting things that's happened. In, in gaming, I'm really glad. It's, as someone who's pre-ordered a, a PlayStation Five, I'm I'm really glad this happened, and I don't know why. I'm just excited. Just it's, excited. It's exciting. I know, but well, like, yeah. I was trying to explain to my friend, yeah, uh, and she's not having any of it. She's like, "Well, it's not good, is it?" Because it's like it's just cutting people off. And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah but it's exciting. It's, it's not. It's 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 wrong." But but to me now, to me, he <laughs> is a very privileged person who knows that I will be able to get an Xbox when it comes out. Um, yeah. well, 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 when I when I deem it suitable, like I know that, like to be honest, yeah, because because I'm very boring and only like one type of game, and and uh, this Xbox Gen, we already know if there's a Fable on the lineup. There's mm-hmm. that Obsidian first person RPG called Avowed coming out. There's that new rare one. It looks like Princess Mononoke or something. And then there's this now. We know that there's going to be Elder Scrolls. And even yeah. though Elder Scrolls is like a hundred percent a PC game, and I will probably get it on both, yeah. the idea of being able to play it in bed is just hugely appealing to me. So yeah. um, it's exciting, and it's exciting for them to, to to have games that are exciting, like because Xbox hasn't had that unless you like Gears and Halo, like for years and years. Yeah. It might, you know, yeah. not not to be horrible to the Xbox, but but it's like you know, I, I think it's it's cool, but it, you know. Uh, I, th- I think what last last gen for me it wasn't even a question. I, I thought if you're getting an Xbox One, you're making a mistake. Yeah, you should get you should get a PlayStation yeah. Four. Mm-hmm. And now is it's it's really really um, interesting and and how how it should be. I think you know it, sh- it, it should be like this. It should be a, a, if you know if you're going to have that kind of competition that's that's in theory keeping prices down and keeping 
you know, pushing services forward. And, you know, make no mistake about it that the only reason that the, or any of this is happening is because Microsoft really struggled against their competitors, you know, six, seven years ago, whatever, whatever it was. So now they're kind of encouraged to kind of push back and fight back and 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 uh, make it work. And Game Pass has been probably the biggest success. And but then they've they've also released the most powerful console of the generation. So you've got Xbox One X, which is you know a, a great machine. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the, the Game Pass is probably. Uh, did you guys see that argument put forward by uh, whoever Eurogamer or something that that. The, this is all about the Game Pass. Microsoft is all about the Game Pass, and then getting their money back through Game Pass and increasing the user base of Game Pass is what is what this is all about. Because, amazingly, all of Bethesda's games now are also going to be coming to Game Pass. Yeah, they want, they want. So it's not even about the fucking sales. And when you think yeah. of exclusivity, in your, in theory, what what Microsoft are, could really be looking at is twelve months of game pass exclusivity before it goes to you know to, to wherever else you know playstation and, or whoever, well, or wherever it goes and, you have to buy Nintendo. it yeah yeah, yeah. That, exa- yeah absolutely absolutely so if you want to if you've got a switch and they're releasing elder scrolls 6 on the uh, nintendo switch and on the playstation 5 it costs you well on a playstation it, it costs you about 140 quid i think by the time it comes out and on the well, Nintendo Switch, it costs you about sixty quid. It's on a game, you said that because on a game I just it's ten ninety nine a month. It's just yeah. it's ridiculous. I just yeah. I was just thinking in my head. I was like, if you have a good month, like let's say like September, October, or something next year, and there's two good games that come out on Game Pass, then that's still within your whatever ten pound or whatever. Yeah. Two games on the PlayStation is 140 quid like genuinely like it's a lot of money all of a sudden that's like a food shop for a lot of like adults like for a month 140 quid so like you could spend on food for a month freely if you buy yourself it's a lot of it's a lot of fucking money like that you're saving like i've been playing crusader kings right and i'm having a great time but it's about 45 quid i think or 55 quid if you buy it if it's not on game pass i'm really loving crusader kings now but if you work it out 55 quid is about eight months of Game Pass or some something like that, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. And I, in eight months' time, I'm not going to remember Crusader Kings 3. So it's, to me, it's worth not buying it and just renting yeah. it. You know, um, so... Oh, totally. Yeah, but it, it's huge, though. It's absolutely huge. And even though Elder Scrolls is a PC um, game, like I said, if I have to buy it on PC or I can play it for free and it well, not for free, but it, within my subscription model on Game Pass and it'll, you know, uh, fucking look a little bit worse and I'll have to use a bloody controller I'm fine to take that hit, to be honest so, yeah, it, it's it's huge, man Yeah I I, I, um, I I think, well, I've already heard of people I know what one person who is literally about to pre-order one, a uh, PlayStation Five, and then went. So hang on, can I play Elder Scrolls on the PlayStation Five? Right. I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. So then they didn't pre-order it. So, so that's that's genuine. That's that's really Microsoft awesome. casts doubt. Yeah, yeah, it- <laughs> but it's fucking overcast spells. Do you know what I mean? Super. It's, it's like a, yeah. it's just. That is doubt level fifty, man. It's just not, you know. It's a, uh, it's a hell of a hell of a move. And I think that the, um, you know, that maybe maybe twelve months ago you could have made the argument that, okay, Microsoft has got a great, uh, you know, like service offer and a great value proposition. And if you want to get in cheap, you know, like you were saying before, Jake, with the Xbox One S, you could get in on that and get a load of Game Pass and. For like you know, in the Black Friday sales, and it'll cost you less than a hundred quid. You know that's great yeah. value, but PlayStation had loads of exclusives, and if you wanted to, to play God of War or Last of Us or Uncharted or whatever, you had to get a PlayStation and pay the money. Now I think the value proposition is is so good, so good on the Xbox with Xbox Series S and Game Pass, giving you access to. All of these games, all of the Bethesda titles, and all and, and everything for two hundred and fifty quid plus yeah. ten ninety nine a month, mm-hmm. compared to 
okay, let's say the cheapest version of the PlayStation 5, which is 360 quid, Yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And then every single fucking game that you want to buy costs at least... 900 pounds. The cheapest, yeah, is at least 60 quid, right? Mm -hmm. Everything else is going to be more than that. So (laughs) so it's uh, eye-watering in price compared to the Xbox. Uh, So, yeah, uh, it's... uh, who knows what this could mean in you know you'll you'll we'll find out in you know 12 months i reckon you'll know you'll just you'll, we'll see. you'll just yep. know <laughs> yeah <laughs> you reckon sony yeah. might be forced to come out with their own game pass in like response nice. good luck they're so far behind now <laughs> they're so far behind like like fucking oh good luck catching up because PlayStation- Plus collection is it, the PlayStation Plus collection, which they announced with with the PS5 price and stuff very recently. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you sign up to PlayStation Plus, which m- most people who've got a PS4 uh, would anyway, um, and you'll get access to 15 games. Was it? Yeah, yeah. but it's just backwards compatible PS4 games. Exactly, and it's backwards compatible PS4 games like Battlefield One and mm-hmm. other other games that. I've played. I've yeah. played all of them. Uh, even the, you know, the the ones that really stand out as highlights on that list, I have no interest in playing anymore. Um, you know, which which is a problem. If this if this is a if PlayStation if um, PlayStation Plus collection is a is like a first step, and they're going to add more and you know, but they're not. They just not are they? They're not. We know they're really... not going to. They're not going to be able to get EA, and they're not going to be able to get fucking. Bethesda, like Microsoft, have got so many, uh, you know, steps that they've gone yeah. forward with this. That it's yeah. like if you were a publisher given the choice between PlayStation and uh, a, an Xbox, you'd pick Game Pass, right? Because it'd yeah. be they're, 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 there's more reason, there's more return. So it's PlayStation are gonna have to bring some bangers out to mm-hmm. even be they really are they really yeah. are first of all they're gonna have to bring some bangers out to make me pay 70 fucking quid for them and they're gonna need to bring some bangers out to even you know just compete i think you know because you know like e- even when you think of those games i mentioned yeah like fable like that is like already just from the name from it, it's got already got potential to be a game of the year like an IP yeah. that could do it. Same yeah. with, with the new Elder Scrolls. Like it, it, Skyrim 2 could be the fucking game of the year. Yeah. Like, uh, I mean, God of War 2 could as well. You know, this yeah. Horizon game could. Just buy, buy fucking Silent Hill, Sony, and put out Silent Hill, man. That's the only fucking hope at this point. Yeah. They need, to, they need to start making some moves. Um, yeah. Certainly. Uh, yeah. Exciting, though, isn't it? It's exciting. It's, it's, because it could have easily just been a kind of rerun of the last generation where, you know, you had one console that was making good games and another that just just wasn't. Um, Brought Usher to the stage to talk about DRM or whatever the fuck yeah, it was. <laughs> you know, but it, that's certainly not the case now. And, um, you know, it, it certainly made me think about where I'm putting my money and stuff, but I'm, st- I'm still going to get a PlayStation. But um, it's it's good. It's It's good. It's a good, it's yeah. a good thing. It's an exciting thing, and like you were kind of alluding to right at the beginning, Jake. Who knows what studios will now, you know, work together on stuff, or what IP will be able to shuffle. They'll be able to shuffle around from, you know, from Bethesda to Obsidian and, and what mm-hmm. have you. So that's probably the most exciting thing about it, really. Um, all right then. That was that was that was a lot. That was a lot. Yeah, of- yeah, yeah. <laughs> considering, considering we thought of it five minutes before, like you said, yeah. you know. Yeah. Uh, okay, Liam, you have been playing a bit of Hades this week. Did you? Is that is that right? Uh, yeah, but like half an hour this morning is all I played. Uh, it's yeah. a- I played a lot of Hades this week. Maybe that's where it came. I did play a lot of it in early access, but this is my first run at it. Now it's version one point or probably like one point oh point. Not one, two, seven, or whatever it's up to now. Because there's been a few <laughs> more updates. But yeah, yeah. It, it's still uh, it, great. It looks nice, doesn't it? It looks nice on a small screen. I think. Like, but. It, I'm actually I'm hard pressed to tell what is actually because it's been so long since I played it since the early access on PC. Yeah, I'm actually struggling yeah. to tell what's new content and what's old content that I've already seen. Yeah, 
So at this point, everything might as well be new to me because it's been so long since I played it last. But yeah, I'm, I'm having a great time with it. I still haven't... I'm a bit rusty. I keep getting my ass kicked by Meg, the first Fury boss. She yeah. keeps battering me. But I'm getting better and better with each run. I've unlocked the spear again. And I'm getting I'm getting through levels a lot faster. It's... Jake, um, huh? what, how, how, are you, how are you finding it after... I know we talked about this last week, um, but... yeah. It's, um, uh, it's been a long time coming, really, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. I've been really excited about this. Um, I'm a big fan of roguelikes, as you know, and I'm seeing all these people online saying best roguelike ever. And I'm like, yeah, I remember what I felt like. I, felt like. I, I, I don't necessarily agree with that, but it's certainly fucking good. Um, that's, that's a bit of boyhood syndrome there, once again, isn't it? It's, yeah, the, it it's, the, it's a good recent roguelike, isn't it? That's if the, you go back to like when I first spoke about it, maybe two years ago, I, I think I was very much the same. Like the potential for it is massive, but the thing is, it's like, I don't know, when you crack it, you crack it. So like I, I played yesterday, so I've not, I've not died many times, right? I'm, I'm probably like 14 runs in and I finished it last night. I had like really good RNG. So I, I normally use the shield, but one thing that I I haven't seen since um, I played it last was that like occasionally during a run, when you go to like the little skeleton dude before you, you hop in for another run, a certain weapon will be highlighted and it'll give you like an extra 20% boost to darkness which is the currency that you take over after every run so that's your permanent currency the one that you upgrade like big things with so you can use that's the upgrade the, the currency that you use to upgrade your maximum health your maximum damage and, and and whatnot so um normally i use the shield right but uh i this this run that i finished it with was the bow which is like probably my least favorite one i don't like the sword and i don't like the bow it's just really not good for me it's like uh the bow is it's regular attack. It's a line, and if you time it right, you do extra damage. And the cast ability for it, it shoots like an arc of arrows, which is not really that good, especially early on, because all the enemies are small. And then by the time you're in the later levels, um, you don't bother upgrading your cast. So it's just, anyway, whatever. But I, I played around with this... Um, doom mechanic which i've not seen before but doom is it, it's basically like explosive arrows so it'll damage them for like say 30 damage and then after about one second it does like 186 damage because I, I upgraded it with a couple of pomegranates this is so relevant to hades fans but if you've got no idea what i'm on about i'm really sorry that it's so bubbly so i use a couple of pomegranates on this doom thing for my regular attack with the bow and i had two death defies on one was from the skeleton tooth, from giving um, some amber of the gods to the skeleton. That's a, a tip for you guys. If you're new to the game, give the skeleton your little... Um, you, you get like these... I guess it's like nectar or something, nectar mm -hmm. of the gods. So it looks like alcohol. And you can give them to NPCs. And when you do, they'll give you a, a boon or a charm or whatever the heck it's called. I think it might be a charm, actually. But when you go to pick your weapons, you can put an accessory on. And they all do different things. So one might be... Uh, you get five health back after every room. One might be you do more damage with a certain weapon. Um, but if you use it on a skeleton, I'm pretty sure it's a skeleton, you get his tooth, which is like, a, I guess it's supposed to be like a suicide pill or death, fake your own death thing. And you come back to life after you um, after you die. And then you can get another one. So I had two death defies on. And uh, yeah, I finished the game using uh, mostly this doom ability and then i unlocked something where every time i shot an arrow another arrow like a homing missile came out and that also had doom damage on so I, with one shot i could do about 700 damage so the part i normally die at in the game is the hydro which is the boss of the second world because it's just as loads of bullet hell and like i'm pretty stupid and i can't yeah but i managed to do it really easily with this bone arrow. So I guess I just got good RNG, but then when you've done that, I'm like, all right. And so I didn't, yeah. you know, um, but yeah, I, I like, I like dying in this game because each time you die, you go through the halls of uh, the underworld again, and you can speak to different NPCs. There's different dialogue. It unlocks some things. You can get some permanent upgrades just from dying a certain amount of times. New mechanics come just from dying a certain amount of times. Like yeah. eventually you unlock, Wrath, which is like a limit break kind of thing. Um, 
and yeah, you learn about the characters in the game. You know, you can the more you talk to certain ones, the more your relationship builds with them. So that's cool. It's got that kind of almost like Stardew Valley relationship system thing. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's it's really cool, and I like that they've incentivized using different weapons because I would never have used that bow, and I would never have discovered what I yeah. discovered, and it was really mm-hmm. fun. So yeah, yeah but um, it, it's decent. It's, it's quite easy on the Switch as well because you've got this. Um, like aim assist that snaps. Which yeah, is I, know, I noticed that. I noticed that. It's it's quite nice. It does make it quite nice to play on the Switch because yeah. of that. I think I can. I was trying to think. You know, without that, I can imagine it being actually a bit awkward to, to play. But they're, they're it's the they're the kind of kind of studio where the the like fluidity is really important. So mm-hmm. when you when you play in all the different you know all the different games have got something unique about how they play and stuff and and. Uh, you know, the transistor and thing and uh, Bastion especially feel great to to play, and then even Pyre in the, the the kind of fantasy sport thing that they created for the game Pyre, uh, that just feels amazing and really slick. And I'm sure that's got like a strong snap aim thing going on or something. I can't remember; it's ages since I played it, but you know, it wasn't it wasn't down to like raw um, accuracy. It was down to well, what's the best? Yeah. How does it feel good to play? You know, and still be challenging, but but how does it you know feel the best to play? So mm-hmm. I, I'm not surprised that they decided to go for that kind of. Just it's a subtle thing, isn't it? It's a subtle thing. It's just a subtle little kind of yeah aim yeah. that pull, just pulls you in the right direction. But it's it it works. I I think so. Anyway, I've not played a huge amount. No, it, um, it's, it's good. I like the the variation of of weapons and abilities is pretty cool. But the real, I don't think. It's- like ever because it's still not binding of Isaac that that combination system is crazy but this it's like I find that like even though it's supposed to be loads of randomness it, when you get like you know every run if you would just assume you can get to the second world every run you, eventually you will find the power-ups you need so like a really easy way to to get far is like Zeus has got a good ability where when you dash it causes damage just get that, and if you've got like three dashes that you've unlocked, you can just literally span A around and then go for the pomegranates of power and upgrade that. That's how I did that loads with a shield, because if you hold your shield, it deflects everybody. You charge through and then dash, 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 dash. Um, but yeah, I'd say that if anyone's struggling, like anyone listening, because I saw somebody, I think someone tweeted me about it again, but like the good t- a good tip is uh, to get to find something that you like and upgrade it with the pomegranates, or whenever you see a hammer, get the Daedalus hammer because that will upgrade your regular attack in a really big way, mm-hmm. and it, it's really, really super, super useful. So that's yeah, what I'd cool. say. That was uh, a thor- thor- advice there from me. Thorough, 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 and in depth. Um, well done. Uh, that was a good, good Hades overview. No more Hades now, probably. Hades. Um, in <laughs> so let's do, let's do let's do a couple of emails then. Um, so as I was saying at the uh, beginning of the podcast, if you want to write in, it's dearspecialmoves at gmail.com. Send us your personal stories, anecdotes, uh, questions, anything you want, opinions, and we will uh, see if we can get it in the podcast and um, read them out. This one is from someone called Smiling J. Sounds like a fucking DC villain. Um, <laughs> Smiling J says, Dear Special Moves. Smiling Jay, well done. This is Smiling Jay, mailing in from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, in the US. Yeah. I work as a CDL city driver, basically a truck driver, making deliveries throughout most of the states for a freight carrier. That's good info. I like like that, Smiling Jay. Nice. Uh, I've been a longtime YouTube viewer ever since the pretty good gaming days. One day, I get invited to my buddy's PSN party chat so he and his girlfriend can convince me to play Modern Warfare multiplayer because he's decided to buy the game for himself and his girlfriend. They were both kind of frustrated that day because they kept losing matches and he really wanted me to get the game. But as we were talking, I was playing Monster Hunter World. Hearing my enjoyment of the game, my buddy's girlfriend literally says, maybe we should play what Smiling Jay is playing. It sounds like he is actually having fun. So I recommended Monster Hunter World to her and sent her a link to a video that she might like to give her a sense of what the game is about. Hearing her excitement, my buddy immediately gets on the PSN store and starts looking at prices for the game. But then she sees one of the monsters limping away 
and takes a deep breath and asks, they make sad noises when they limp away. <laughs> then, then she starts to cry. I immediately, <laughs> I, I immediately felt terrible. So we went back to Fortnite. You sick bastard. <laughs> went back to playing Fortnite. Now I feel unsure about recommending the game I am currently playing, which is Hunt Showdown. <laughs> 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 or any game in general that yeah. may have animals making sad noises. We try to play Remnant from the Ashes, but we had to drop that game since the second world had enemy dogs in the desert towns that whimper and oh, cry out when you shoot them. Do you guys have any suggestions on what game we could play together on the PS4 <laughs> that doesn't have sad animal noises? Yeah, that's Thanks, what for saying, yeah, <laughs> I was gonna say. Thanks for taking the time to read my email. It's my first time mailing in. I usually just watch the videos and read the comments. I hope you guys stay safe and in good health. Smiling Jay. Thanks, Smiling Jay. That's yeah, a great, that's great awesome, email. Man. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, uh, The Last of Us Part 2, if you, if you want, because uh, it has the reverse effect of actually making you annoyed at being lectured about the... Uh, the, yeah. the Stop Molotov cocktailing a dog. Oh. Yeah, but here's loads of Molotov cocktails and here's loads of dogs. Um, <laughs> it, it, it'll, it'll, uh, that had the reverse, reverse effect on me. I'm usually the same. Like I'd really hate it when animals are uh, just killed and stuff in games. And I, I know that it's crazy because, you know, I, the amount of... <laughs> Because this conversation started with an intervention to get Smile and Jay to play the game that they were playing, Modern Warfare. Yeah, exactly, exactly. (laughs) Modern Warfare, a game which I have played uh, many hours of and enjoyed the thrill of shooting humans in the head. I fucking loved it. Yeah, but I don't like killing animals, Um, and you know, I don't know, I don't know what that's about. Um, I think I I I think like you know, it's some weird emotional blackmail because like. You don't. Is. It's not. It's not often in games that you shoot a man and then he starts begging for his life. Last and, of Us Part Two. <laughs> apart from the Last of Us Part Two, in fact, though, actually, the Modern Warfare campaign has you doing some similar shit. Yeah, there are people like, I've got. I've got kids. I've got a wife. Yeah. You know. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's yeah. a lot. It's well, a lot of that. Yeah, um, and and well, the series has done it a lot. I remember the uh, No Russian. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, level, which is, is the same thing. thing. I've got kids. I've got a wife. But instead, instead of it's actually more like. Rest in peace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, so they've tried. They've tried to do that in the past. But multiplayer games, good, clean multiplayer fun that doesn't have any dead animals. Uh, I mean, since you're playing Fortnite, I guess um, Apex Legends. If you haven't played it, that's, yep. that's a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Does it have any animal death in it? There are some. Know. There were some creatures in some cages at one point. But yeah, they're just like sort of, pterodactyl things. Yeah, and they, and and they they're like they wreck you, right? You can't kill them, can you? You can because it, 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 oh. that's the funny thing. So they're captive animals, and if you keep them alive, they squawk when you're nearby, which alerts enemies to your presence. Oh. So you have to forget that. Then you don't have to, but it's probably God. Nasty. That's hard. It's hard, isn't it? To, to think um, well, Destiny. There's no animals. Uh. There's like alien no, but, dog things, but they don't alien, whip, alien they don't whimper just... as far as I know when they yeah, get the, shot. The, yeah, um, the, the whimpering is is definitely the thing here, isn't it? Like um, Borderlands uh, is got loads of animal whimpering sounds with the alien yeah. dog. I don't yeah. think Destiny does. That's quite a good general multiplayer game to play, and it's free to play so up to a certain yeah. point. Yeah. So if yeah. you can, if you, if you know, I don't know what it's like in Oklahoma, but like if the internet is pretty good there, it's, you know, it's not going to take you yeah. much more than a night to get it and, and it's worth a go. And it's really like superhero-y. So it's yeah. so far removed from, yeah. you know, like, like it, it has that RPG-ishness. Of the, I guess it's quite similar to Monster Hunter in, in a few ways, actually. If you go out with a party of, of people and you, you know, you've got like a, you know the the way that it pans out is is pretty similar, and and you are spending the time <clears throat> in Destiny a lot of the time. There are you know there are big bosses where you're just whittling down their health in a similar kind of way using different yeah. you know, mm-hmm. skills. And, 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 and s- similar still, like it, it's it's a gear grind. You are working yeah. for loot. You're farming, but this time you're not farming. You know pathetic raptors or whatever. Instead, you're uh, yeah just shooting some bloody aliens that think they know best. Um, so yeah, I, I just think that animals are just it's really lame. Like I don't care mm. at all about any of them because I know that what they're trying to do is 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 this. Because you don't get people doing it, but it's always like think of the animal no, definitely not. Yeah. 
And it's, it's uh, have you seen that Lemmy video where he? It's just a clip from his live stream, wasn't it? When when he's uh, he's playing something completely like innocuous, like Ori in a blind forest or something. And he yeah. says, like, yeah. they've only they're only doing it. They're only trying to make you like them because they want to hurt you. They want to yeah. take it away from you. Yeah. <laughs> Which is exactly what it is. They're just they're just they're just, you know, putting the, the cute kind of uh, whimpering, oh god, I'm dying dog animal noise. Because it just gets us like an instant simple emotional reaction out of you. Yeah. Um, which is why I hated The Last of Us. Uh, okay. Um so Speaking of Destiny, actually, we, I, was, I did want to touch on this quickly. So Destiny 2, um, uh, thanks again for the email, uh, Smiling Jay. Um, so De- Destiny 2 was, um, you know, is, is one of these games, which is a, a first-person shooter, which is just just big, like a big install size. It takes, it's like, you know, you know, with Call of Duty Modern Warfare now taking up 200 gig or whatever it is and whatever, it, God knows what it is at this point. Um, so Destiny 2 was in that, Category definitely is up to about 120 gig or something like that. Um, it's a big, big game to download and install. Um, well, as part of the uh, Beyond Light update, which is coming out soon, which I'm really looking forward to, it sounds like a, a probably the biggest revamp, for, like proper revamp, the game has had in a long time. They're taking out a load of old content, uh, which doesn't it doesn't. That's not usually what developers say. People don't usually say good news. We're getting rid of all this stuff. Mm-hmm. They say we're adding things, but B- Bungie have, you know, c- quite boldly, I think, decided to actually remove some planets and stuff and, and trim the game back because it was so bloated and and there's just areas and activities and stuff that just weren't getting played. Yeah, so they're cutting the file size down by quite a lot, and I think it could drop to I think it's about seventy gig is the biggest it could it can be after this update. So that depending on your platform, if you're on PC, Xbox, or PlayStation, it could be fifty gig, it could be seventy gig. But the point is, it's not one hundred and twenty, one hundred and thirty, one hundred and forty, which is pretty cool. I think. I mean, I I, I was pretty interested by this, and you know, it yeah. could maybe set a precedent. I think. I think, I think yeah. it's. The removal of content is pretty good. Sorry, Liam. I, I think Sorry. there's a bit of a delay. I don't mean to keep it up to oh, you. No, I, was just, uh, yeah. I was just going to say, cool. like, very, very recently, Final Fantasy fourteen Online did the same thing, where the most cool. recent patch that came out uh, streamlined the main story quest, so like the base game storyline, because there was a lot of complaints in that that you know, it was just like it was full of filler, full of like grindy quests that didn't even reward you that well. And a big part of Final Fantasy XIV is people get told to play it for the story. So they want to go, but and then but everyone goes, oh, you got to play like 30 hours of really shit side quests until you get to the yeah. expansion content, which is like where the real good stuff begins. But yeah, like they took that criticism to heart and yeah, they like proper streamlined the entire base game before you get to the expansion. Which just which is, which is yeah. a very good thing, isn't it? And m- mm. more of this, I, I, please. I, I mean, I'm, I'm very happy about this. I'm very excited about this Destiny update because it's intro- it's reintroducing a couple of the old original areas uh, from the uh, original Destiny game, including Old Russia, which I fucking love. I just lo- I love the the in-game area of Old Russia, the Cosmodrome. Mm. Um, so they're bringing that back, but do, you know, doing new stuff with it, and then, and then getting rid of the stuff. And not permanently. It, it, they're just trying to, you know, games are live games like this now. And not, what that means is basically balance changes, activities, events, new enemies, new weapons. This is, I, I really like the idea of it, of them cycling planets, cycling areas, cycling like, yeah. you know, uh, taking taking areas out. And then when they when they bring them back, there's going to be something new and different about them. And maybe it'll be 12 months, 18 months before you see them again. But that feels more like a, a, like a tangible thing to get excited about. Yeah. Um, it's like, yeah, what, like Apex Legends did a cool job of that where they changed the map yeah. entirely. And yeah. map, they, they brought the old map back and it felt really like a, a yeah. reason to jump back in, I guess. So, so yeah. Totally. So that's just a, a cool bit of Destiny news, uh, seeing as we were, we were talking about it. And perhaps uh, a sign of things to come, which is, I guess, the... Hopefully, hopefully. Um, so let's do uh, let's do another quick email, I think. Uh, we'll, we'll do them 
back back to back. Um, so this is another Dear Special Moves email. This one is from uh, George, who also says, Dear Special Moves. Good luck, George. He also adds, May the Empire reign supreme. I like, I like uh, how... No, 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 no. Don't I like how, George, followed yeah. by some fucking... What's yeah. that? I, I, like, I like how... Um, how the dear special moves people are really leaning into the fucking imperial <laughs> overlord, yeah. um, the oh, villainous fucking yeah. Lord Farquaad. That's like Darth Vader, mate. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, nice one, George. Um, George says, "Voiced or silent protagonists in games." So that's voiced or silent protagonists in games. Personally, I look upon mute main characters with disdain and a <laughs> grimace. <laughs> <laughs> Say for a few games, it just comes across as laziness on behalf of the developers and or writers who fall back on the idea of it lets the player impose themselves onto the character. But for me, it prevents me from investing in the story. It gives me nothing really to connect with narratively and takes me out of the immersion due to the voice being conspicuous in its absence. The worst example is the Far Cry series. Initially, I loved Far Cry, Far Cry 3, with a main character descending into madness, violence, and chaos in a way that actually ran parallel with the progression system of the game. The more the character got imbibed, <laughs> the behaviours of the island and... Uh, what? I've missed. I've misread that, of the island, and lost touch with... I may have... Yeah, I've, <laughs> someone's gone wrong there, either me or George. But, uh, yeah, the point is, the character becomes more powerful... The further you, the, the further you progress in the story, there were actual personal stakes uh, for the character who I followed on a journey that I was very much invested in. But in the subsequent 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 games, you just play as an empty, lifeless vessel with no agency, personality, or reason to care, other than NPCs telling you that you care. And there's definitely a hand. There's definitely a handful of games where it does either make sense contextually or at least doesn't stick out like a sore thumb. The first two, Bioshocks, for example, do it well, and Half-Life gets away with it. I'd be interested in your opinions on the matter. Feel free to validate or set me straight as necessary. Keep safe and healthy. All the best, George. Thank you, George. Thank you. Um, yeah, I... I um, well, I always, 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 always doubt the idea that developers are lazy um, is the first and biggest thing I, I, I would say. I don't think anything that you see in a game is the result of laziness ever, based on <laughs> based on the ones that I've met and spoken to and heard stories about. Yeah, um, right. I would say that they are certainly not in any way ever lazy. Now that applies to almost all criticism criticism of games. It is never going to be down to lazy developers. Because they, you don't understand. The people cracking the whip, their whip has got barbed wire on it and fucking yeah. nails in that whip. And they will crack it. That's what Crunch is about, isn't it? The developers are just fucking pawns in the game, right? So if the publisher yeah. wants this game to have this, it'll happen, isn't it? So it's, yeah. Yeah, it's not like a developer's just gone, can't be arsed. It's always some guy who's probably never played the fucking game making a decision but yeah, yeah. yeah uh i i guess it's an industry standard from like the early rpg days right like where mm -hmm. they couldn't voice shit yeah. that has kind of become normal normalized uh, yeah yeah uh, i think i think there's 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 a lot of different types of silent protagonists as well though isn't there i, I guess um you know you, you've got the type where you literally give voice to them like in you know, like old Bioware stuff, like Night's Old Republic. And yeah, things right. Like that, where you don't say they don't say anything because you literally decide how they, you know, what they say, and and then things like Mass Effect try and take that a step up by actually voicing the decisions that you. So you you kind of feel like you're shaping Shepard a bit a bit more tangibly, but it doesn't for me. I, I feel like the I don't feel any stronger about Shepard than I did about the Night's Old Republic protagonist because mm -hmm. I was still fundamentally making cool, interesting story choices. Yeah. Um, so it's about, that was kind of about presentation. I mean, Liam, Liam, what do you think? Uh, like personally, I don't really have an opinion either way. I don't mind voiced or silent protagonist. Sometimes silent can be funnier because you get some like really stupid reactions. Yeah. We've got like, you know, like breath of the wild. You have characters yeah. telling you like, 
really like brutal things like how they survived the war a hundred years ago and then Link's just staring at blank face like nothing's happening which is kind of it's I know that's like probably not intentional <laughs> on the developer's part but it is funny <laughs> uh, but yeah like I don't know like it, like you were saying Mike it can be a bit of a trade off sometimes like yeah. With the with like Fallout Three, you had so many different dialogue options because your character wasn't voiced. Then in yeah. Fallout Four, one of the biggest criticisms of that was because the character was voiced now, all yeah. the dialogue options were like stupidly simplified to the point where yeah, people hated it because it lost pretty much all the nuance it had from the older yeah. Fallout games because they had to totally. you know, they had to fit yeah. the responses within what voice lines they could make. Yeah, I guess totally. like with an RPG, if you're going to go like, like Divinity Original Sin, right? There's no way that they could avoid, like they obviously put a lot of effort into the voice cast with that, right? Like everything is voiced apart from you. I guess the reason that that's not the case is because of the, you could be a lizard, <laughs> you could be a fucking yeah. a skeleton, you know, a female, like there's all sorts of, you, know, <clears throat> you uh, could be a male, you could be a male or female variant of, uh, any like what was that four or five races and all four or five of them races could be undead or not undead to begin with that's before you even start yeah. going down the the kind of weight and size and like skin color and things like that it's just the, the amount of combinations is just is you could where do you begin and, and also in in a something like divinity you you end up with like you know a lot of the time there'll be like 10 options or something you'll be like scrolling through which dialogue branch you want to go down next and there's it's, just loads of writing yeah. in it mm-hmm. it's i guess that's where these games really you know like they come from like a text-based rpg yeah background so i guess there's like a certain expected amount of like uh yeah fluidity in in like the dialogue options and because of that like it's almost it would be like a huge task to do that to the point where like i don't actually think it would be worth it I don't think it would add that much, but no. to that end, right, which might be what he's actually talking about originally, if it's like a set character, like a pre-baked character, like Far mm-hmm. Cry 3 or something, like, like, it, like if Geralt, like, is he is Geralt, right? There's, he's not like fucking Jake, is he? He's no. Geralt. Same with, like, like Link is a probably, like, as Link, is, I, I think, gets away with it because mm-hmm. it's like the Zelda thing. Like, Link is, yeah, yeah, it's kind of a interesting like avatar for you yeah as and you, can, to, you can change link's name right the hero of time could yeah. be called jake like but yeah. but with, yeah. if it's only like Geralt or, 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 or yeah <laughs> come on man but <laughs> you know like like then you think about like like that and, and i guess that's when it becomes like super important like yeah iconic lines like imagine if like the majority of metal gear solid one is kodak uh, kodak yeah. sorry not kodak mm-hmm. right yeah um conversations and and that's fucking um text so yeah. that could easily have not been voiced and imagine no solid snakes voice right like mm-hmm. or uh like even like silent hill and resident evil like even though like obviously the budget must have been pretty stretched for those voice actors because the yeah. lines are pretty you know out there it's so to me that's super crucial like yeah. Harry and James was like little voices and shit. It's funny, but, but yeah. uh... it's, it's, that's totally right. And uh, you, you kind of look at, you just look at it on on what is right for the game. It's, it's part of the the medium. It's part of the mm-hmm. format. It's it's like, you know, I, I can't think of a direct comparison at the moment. But it's like you know, th- th- there are decisions you make depending if you're working on films or in music or in writing a book. It's just part of the. Are you writing in first person or third person? Are you you know whatever. <laughs> It's yeah. part of the form, and whether or not you have a silent protagonist or not is is really important. Mm-hmm. And Geralt, can you imagine a world where Geralt doesn't speak and doesn't Isn't fucking say, whinging all the time? Uh, lilac and gooseberries. Like if yeah. he's not saying that all the time, yeah. what, like well, well, that's not. I don't want to play it then. It's not the you know it's not the same thing. It's yeah. a key exactly. ingredient. Yeah. I think so. The, I, can, I can see both sides. The only time it annoys me uh, is when it flip flops between both in the single yeah. game. Like the older yeah. Call of Duty games, where I think it's like Modern Warfare Two, where you'll you'll have like soap or whatever, and he, he'll be like an NPC in that mission, and he'll be talking, he'll be giving you orders, he'll be shouting at you. But then later on in the game, where you take control of soap for a couple missions, suddenly he's got nothing to say and he's dead silent when you take control yeah. of him. Whereas literally yeah. in the mission before and in the mission briefing that happens in the loading screen. 
he's talking like anyone else would. But as soon yeah. as you take control of him, dead silent. And people That's just, a fucking excellent point. People just like, <laughs> it's, it's hilarious. You, got it's like hilarious. Cap, you have like Captain Price speaking to you going, we're going to go over here. It's like, okay, Soap. Just nothing. But then in yeah. the in the brief in the, in the briefing in the next one, he's like, "No, we should have done this, boss." And it's just like, I, I, why I didn't you say that it. in the mission? Like, thankfully, they fixed that in like <laughs> Modern Warfare, where the character you controlled actually spoke rather than yeah. just yeah. being yeah. dead silent. Um, yeah. But yes, yeah, like, oh, it was that's a, that's a good point. I think that you know, in Modern Warfare, that's that uh, definitely that is um, a, a point in in George's arguments favor really because because it, it does i definitely felt uh, uh more investment in the story in modern warfare mm-hmm. than perhaps usual but because the character was, was pretty interesting pretty cool yeah. um uh you know i like i like the that he had a perspective on stuff uh, mm-hmm. uh, what one thing i was going to say as well after that in kind of in line with what you're saying liam uh, is about destiny where your your the speech is so infrequent that you forget that your character has a voice, mm-hmm. and then there's cut scenes are so infrequent that you forget what he looks like. Yeah. But then sometimes he appears. He appears. There are a, there is a cut scene, and he appears. And not only is is he there, but he also says things in a weird voice that was like, "Why does he? Say- oh, <laughs> holy shit! Oh yeah, he can speak." Like I've oh heard yeah, that. I, have to, I have to set his voice preset about two hundred yeah. hours ago. Mm-hmm. It's it's a strange thing, and and, and in Destiny, I, th- I feel like they should have. Uh, I want that. I would rather the Destiny style protagonist is just it doesn't say anything. I think that works better because it's a total, complete and utter avatar for for me. I'm a blue alien, and uh, you know I've got like huge armor, and I punch aliens in the face and stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't want to, you know, I don't want to to be invested in in a Geralt type character there. But yeah, um, I think. It's, if your guy had a stupid voice, like, oh god, I'd probably yeah. just laugh at me and tell me I'm never going to make it and call me Ashen One and all this. Um, yeah. so, so yeah. that's one that's one instance where silence is is, is genius, really, and that's the only yeah. way you could, it could work. Um, all right, thanks for the emails. Thanks, George. That that was a good one, and thanks, Smiling Jay, as well. If you've got any emails for us, remember to send them into dearspecialmoves at gmail dot com. Um, no Man's Sky. Let's do this quickly before we do the new games. <laughs> um, so the No Man's Sky Origins update, which we, I believe, we would have touched on last week. Yeah, you mentioned it. I didn't mm-hmm. even know about it. Glenn, so okay. That's- okay. Uh, so this is the Origins update. Um, Sean Murray's been, been getting very excited on, on Twitter and getting everybody else excited along with him. Uh, tweeting sure. pictures of... Sorry? No. Oh, Sean Murray, Sean Murray did that. yeah, yeah, he did, mate. He did, he did, uh, and it, and it was, um, it it was a kind of a announcement where you know we knew something was coming, we knew it was called Origins, and then this week it came out and with a big, you know, really nice patch note uh, dump of of stuff, and um, Sean Murray had been tweeting pictures of Origins because of ori- Origins, oh, or- so oranges, been, so or- sorry. He'd been posting pictures of oranges because of origins, right? Yeah, that's yeah, that's, yeah, that's yeah. Thanks, yeah. and and so, and I the, my first planet when I booted the game up again to test out the new origins update for No Man's Sky, and my planet was orange, and I thought, ah, that's funny. So I booted up another planet and I started again with a new character and started and I'd not not to investigate. I just I can't remember why. I just. I just did it, oh, yeah. and, and, I, and I started a new and I started a new character on a new planet, and again an orange planet. Jake, I had an orange planet as well. Yeah, didn't didn't think to mention it. I just, I truth be told, I didn't see the oranges thing. I just yeah. thought I had bad RNG, but the cub orange orange. I I I, I that, how far can go? Uh, I I uh, I fuck. I don't know if that's a thing, but please let us know. Orange Hunters Unite. Yeah. Uh, if you've played Origins, can you let us know the colour of your home planet? Thank this, you. This is vital research. Yeah. If you started a new character mm. on No Man's Sky or- Origins, <laughs> uh, did you have an orange planet when you first booted the game up? Um, it's absolutely is, crucial. Yeah, we'd like to know. Uh, because if so, that's fucking good. I like that. That's that's funny if, if, that's, if that's true. But... Uh, yeah, so so the update added. It was kind of a. It wasn't about one thing, you know. A lot of the updates are like, oh, this is about mechs, or this is about uh, base building, or this is about freighters, or you know, this was this was a 
broad like transformation of all the planets and adding bio not well not biomes but just adding all kinds of detail into the into the world that redoing the universe to to you know make it look and feel better and give you new and interesting things to find and discover and stuff and i've got to say it's the, it's the first time I've, I've i really can remember where i i kind of noticed immediately the the difference um when i when i landed on my new planet well first of all there's a new there's a new ui and new music and all that kind of stuff in the menus which, which is really nice and there's, there's actual photos community yeah. photos in the game uh for the different um modes that you can play <clears throat> and that's all good uh but then when it when it when it kind of booted up and and it i, I was on top of a mountain and there was like a really vast distant vista all around and i've i, I haven't seen that before so i could immediately and they said that this was one of the things in it bigger like vistas and, and longer draw distances and the, the well it's not about the draw distances it's just the generation of the planet because the planets still tend to be kind of lumpy hilly kind of things well i i, I seem to think so anyway mm. so this but this certainly felt like a kind of flat flatter plane and i was on a mountain next to this kind of flat plane and it, and it just was you know it, it immediately was really interesting uh, jake you found some cool stuff on a giant fucking worm the one the thing so I've, i just want to say yeah that um when the, sh the the very very you know you know the trailer trailer for no man's sky came about the one that everybody poured over for six months counting yeah. down the days surely if you're like me anyway show my friends show my colleagues show everybody this is the game and uh, everyone got burnt right the, the 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 features that were in that trailer correct me if i'm wrong every single one of them is now in the game there are space battles there are freighters there are giant sandworms there are huge creatures you can make bases fully electric you can you know there's all you can basically program inside the fucking game now like it's it, there are NPCs moving around. You can go third person. You can't play with your friends because that didn't happen in the original. Um, you know, you can form the greatest yeah. Pokedex of all time. Like every feature, I'm pretty sure someone will probably correct me down there. But if you do, good because um, I, 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 I'm pretty sure they're, they're still going to be working on it. But yeah. holy shit, like there's everything. There's clouds, rainbows, fucking underground, fucking. Bases, temples, archaeology, fossils. It's crazy. The game is just 100% different now. But yeah. this is what I wanted to try and bring up. If you aren't, if you are still like a cynic and you have, like, that is your, when it hits this level, when it gets to the thing that it was promised, everything in that trailer, I think we have reached that point now, five years later. But the, the, the crucial thing, I guess, is that, um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's all there. I started it again. I'm playing it on my Xbox, actually. Uh, I don't know if you've heard about the the coup that my daughter has thrown downstairs. She's now turned the PlayStation room into the Hey Dougie, Peppa Pig, and Mr. Tumble room. So now I'm mostly consigned to my Xbox upstairs. So I thought, well, what the fuck? It's completely different. I Even though I'm like a fucking trillionaire in No Man's Sky on my PlayStation, like I'm rich as fuck. I've got like the rare golden snitch from Harry Potter looking ship. I've got a bait, which is brilliant. I started it again because I wanted that fresh. And I'll tell you, I don't like the beginning of the game at one bit. In fact, I, I was just I, I dislike it because I've got like, so you land on, you, you know, you're on your planet. I was on like a bit of a shit planet. It was orange. There was radiation storm. And it's like, shoot this to make this to make this to make this but it's all like really boring stuff like you know if it's, you the first 20 minutes is making metal sheets yeah uh the, 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 there's there's no no question that they, they've lost the uh the initial identity which was to to ex explore that's not what it's about anymore it's about building uh, yeah yeah for gather, sure gather, gathering uh, i mean that you Certainly, there is exploration in it. Obviously, that's what it, that's what the it, that's what you're there to do in your head. But what you're actually doing is, is mining and and uh, and and I, what I don't like what I didn't like about the beginning now is not quite that the crafting and stuff is 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 dull, uh, and I hate the way it's even handled. I, I hate the way you have to like drag it to the 
you know, the, the, you say you like you want to repair something on your ship, but you get like a little diagram of the ship, and then there's like two floaty things that you got to move the cursor to, and be like, yeah, I want to put that in there. And it's not nice. Um, but yeah. I, what I don't like about it is the way that it it lights a fire under your ass right at the beginning. So before, when it st- when you started, you started right next to your ship, and it was crashed, and it was a mis- it was a, like a mystery. It was like, where am I? Why is my ship crashed? What am I supposed to do? What's this glowing red thing? Is the glowing red thing telling me to fix my ship? Oh, okay, I'll better fix my ship. Now you, you you like wake up in the middle of nowhere with no ship, and your radiation suit is is rapidly diminishing. And the game goes quick, fix your radiation suit. So you have to. So it's straight. You don't even get a moment to be like, "Wow, an alien planet." You're just immediately going survival game. You got to survive. Yeah. survive and, survival is crucial here, and it's yeah. not. And 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 um, that is a shame. Uh, I think that they've they've that they've lost that. But but <laughs> is I can see the the kind of wry kind of well, this is what you people asked for kind of thing uh, coming through a little bit. <laughs> but, you know, I can yeah. sense it a little bit. I don't know if it's actually there or not, but you know, I I, I can. I can kind of see and feel that a little bit um, coming through in the in the content that you're getting because <clears throat> it was cri- it was criticised for not having anything you know to do apart from explore. Uh, yeah, and but now, now and there's, that, there's drowning and stuff, drowning and yeah. stuff. To you, you, um, you, a, you know, there's a lot of grind, but when you hit like on my PlayStation account, I've got a base which is fully self-sufficient. It's run by electricity. Which is ra- it, which the electricity is gathered from my solar panels, which because there's a day and night cycle, obviously, like it stores enough, you know, surplus energy. It's it's super efficient, and in fact, I've got enough that I've got a hydrogenic farm that's growing ice crystals, and I've built my base Statham One over this huge <laughs> lake. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, it's I forgot about Statham One. I I've got, I've got like, a little helipad for my ship, uh, and then I've yeah. got a little rope. And I've got automated mining things. And when you when you do your your run, it's like a destiny resource run. I I, I go do me little lap around the island, and I'm picking up all of the resources. It's very satisfying. But then it makes me think I don't want to really leave my little space ranch. I want to yeah. fucking I, I I have been leaving just to capture animals. <laughs> <laughs> I mean to, to make a sanctuary on uh, my home planet. Um, yeah. uh, and I just feel like at that point the game is great, but. They've added a lot now, so when I go back to my PlayStation account, I don't know what the state of Statham One is going to be. Is it going to be deleted? Because because the last update sneaked in electricity, which meant my entire base was just a big nothing that had, like it couldn't even run. And uh, so I'm I'm kind of worried about what that's like, what that means for my progress. Uh, and if I was playing it every day and I had like 500 hours of progress, knowing that that can be, I don't know. It could uproot me pretty quickly, and I'm just left with my billions and my spaceship. Then I'm going to be feeling a bit. Uh. So I wanted to start again, but I. But what I'm saying is, I have to keep telling myself that it gets to that point where it gets exciting. And yeah. you know, I, I remember last time I played it, I found this beautiful, like snowy planet, not an icy planet, a lush planet covered in snow. But there was trees bushes little foxy creatures like it was like it was handmade and uh, you do still uh, you know they've improved the chances of finding planets like that which originally they were saying well no but but yeah it's it's, it's great there's there's good variety there and and it it, it looks good and stuff and i I think that hopefully they've well they've said again yeah again that this is just another small step on the no man's sky journey or you know that kind of thing that they always say with these updates and and um you know, you know, and they've got every right to do it because they're they're backing it up, and they're just putting loads and loads of updates out. Um, so I th- I think that that's what they'll, that's what I'd like to see them look at now, that, because this is a good enough update for me in terms of, you know, shaping the universe into something that's worth exploring and interesting. So now, hopefully, then the next batch of stuff will be about encouraging that and and moving away from the, you know, yeah. the big. The survival, the grind, and just give me a fucking sci-fi adventure, you know, and, and just let me give me a reason to to just go and explore. And, and I'm not interested in building a base. I'm not interested in fucking mining, but I do want to explore the 
explore the universe that they built. So, and I, I hope there's more f- focus on that and, and um, making it feel like a Oregon Trail kind of yeah. venture, venture into the unknown kind of thing. Um, but that's the that's the new No Man's Sky thing. Totally, totally well worth looking at. If you've got it on your PlayStation account or your Steam account or your Xbox, you've got an Xbox Game Pass or whatever, definitely it's worth having another look if you've ever picked it up and, and put it back down. Um, now is a good time to go and have another look, I think. Yeah, especially if you like worms. So let's do the new games before we wrap up. I've got a bad cold, lads. I've got a banging headache at the moment. But we'll do this. We'll do this. We'll do this. Yeah. Well, Liam New played game. Mafia. Didn't even touch on that, but, you know, he finished oh, it as shit. well. It's all right. I can mention it next time. Do you want to do it now? Uh, I'll be I'll be very, very quick then. So, Mafia Definitive Edition. Complete remake, ground up of... Uh, ground up remake of Mafia 1, which came out in 2002 for the PC and PS2, I think. Uh, yeah. This is made by uh, the Mafia 3 developers, Hangar 13, because the original developers of Mafia don't exist anymore. They've been discontinued or defunct for a very long time. And it's basically a complete, not even a retelling, you know, I wouldn't even call it a retelling because it's incredibly faithful to the original. All the story beats are there. Uh, As far as I can tell, all the iconic missions are there, including the race, which everybody hated from the original uh they've actually made it playable this time so don't worry about that and yeah it's like it's good the the new voice acting is good the game at times can look absolutely stunning when it's like when it's raining and at night especially it looks Mm. incredible this game like i played it on pc everything cranked to the highest it could go uh and yeah there's like there's one mission where you have to drive to chinatown in the middle of like a rainstorm so like, it's just pouring down with rain but because of chinatown all the yeah. lanterns are lit up and everything and it looked incredible uh it's a very linear game you know but it's like it's not an open world game like there is an open world you can drive around but there's not really much point to go around and explore it apart from collectibles yeah. it's which like, is uh exactly true to the to, to the, the original, original yeah. and it's uh yeah it's like it's good. It is a good remake. Like the driving is, I really like it because it's got that very um, the way the camera moves behind the car and everything. When you like, because because it's like cars from the nineteen thirties. Obviously, they control like shit. Like so, when you're like trying to, you're in a car chase trying to swerve around the corner. You do this like massive skid, but the way the camera follows behind the car makes it look really yeah. cool. And the feedback on the controller is good as well. Uh, the shooting is exactly like it is in Mafia 2 and 3. So, you know, that's a very subjective thing. Like, if you like the combat in Mafia 2 and 3, you'll like the combat here. If you weren't yeah. so hot on it, you're probably not going to like it this time either. But yeah, the storytelling still holds up. The, the new voice acting is good. The new animations are good as well. Sometimes, though, some of the animations can be a bit... They fall a bit into the uncanny valley. And it looks really goofy because of it. Like right. there's a character in the game called Paulie, and he's basically like a Joe. Pes- he's like a Joe Pesci ripoff, basically. But his some yeah. of his facial animations are unintentionally hilarious because, okay. like, they've done. You can tell they've done like some proper mocap work on his face, but it doesn't quite <laughs> translate one to one. So, like, there's, <laughs> there's a scene where you're in a car, like, you're in a car chase with Paulie. He's driving and he's like he's screaming because he's like swerving off the road and everything. But his facial animation is just amazing. It just look, it somehow looks like he's scared and having the best time of his life, and somehow a psychotic serial killer at the same time. Well, well, now I want to play it. Um, <laughs> I want to, I want to see that. Uh, like, just like okay. look up a cutscene on YouTube. Some of his facial, yeah. like it's only him though. All the other characters are fine. Just his facial animations are a bit <laughs> off. <laughs> I don't know if it's just like because of the way his character he's like he looks a bit like a frog anyway just his character's face right. it's quite fro- right, right. it's quite frog like <laughs> so it's the Jesus <laughs> I don't know if Man, that's I can, or not. can imagine you're working in mocap for Liam uh, <laughs> <laughs> well the facial tracking hasn't quite picked up properly and it's because you look like so much of a frog um, so <laughs> 
<laughs> I don't mean that as an uh, I don't mean that as an insult to who, the actor who played him or whatever. But uh, yeah, like the story still holds up really well. You know, it, even though it is sort of like it's a gangster story that's been told a thousand yeah. times across books, movies, games. Yeah. Now it still holds up quite well because of the performances being so good. And yeah, I I'd recommend it because to be fair, it's an eight to ten hour game. Took me about eight and a half hours playing on normal to get through it. Uh, there's no filler. There's no fluff. It's just like it's all it's all killer, no filler. To be fair, and uh, yeah, uh, better. Yeah, it's not even a full price game. It's thirty five pound if you uh, get it on its own, or you can get it for fifty pound with Mafia Two and Three in the Definitive right. Trilogy Collection. And if you have it on PC. If you have Mafia 2 and 3 already in Steam, you can get it for a bit cheaper as part of that, like, complete your collection bundle thing Steam does. Yeah. So you can get it for, like, yeah. 32 quid instead of 35 quid. But yeah, it's like, if you're looking for a solid 8 to 10 hour games to spend your weekend with, Mafia's quite a good one. Those those prices are um, <laughs> just like, you know, 35, that, that oh, it's not quite a full-priced game is going to be about 50 quid, isn't it? In, in <laughs> and then it's years. 10. Yeah. Don't worry, lad. Yeah. Not full price. It's, it's, it's just fifty-five quid. Yeah. Just the fifty-five. Um, to be fair, right, let's... I'll just final thoughts. I, as far as remakes go, I'd put Mafia just below Resident Evil Two and Three, probably. Not wow. quite okay. on the same level as them, but it's still up there. Wow, that's good. That's really cool. good praise. Mm-hmm. Um. So let's do the uh, new releases. Uh, this is quite a busy week. A uh, couple, couple of big games, anyway. Um, first up, uh, so these are new games for the week starting the 28th of September. Um, Genshin Impact is out on PC, PS4, iOS, and Android. Um, it's an action RPG. Do you guys know anything about this? It's that, yeah. If you remember that game from, what was it, a couple of E3s ago, that looked a lot like Breath of the Wild, but with anime girls. It's that game. Yeah, um, <laughs> I actually played this. Um, it packs East in March, right? Uh, this I, year, Jesus. Yeah, can you remember that? <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it was it was just before COVID kicked off, right? <laughs> Basically, yeah. I remember playing it. Um, I didn't like it. <laughs> that's that's let's just say that uh i i if well, i mean maybe the game has gone a long way um since then but if it hasn't um you know just get nino cooney 2 instead perhaps so well, that's out on the uh, 28th um which is the monday it's worth saying it's free to play as well so Oh well, in that case, you well, can, that, that explains you know, a lot. Actually, there's nothing yeah. nothing to hurt if you want to try it. <laughs> apart from if you get caught, I think it's a gacha game as well. So you're going to be like oh. doing the roles for your characters. Uh, out on the same day as Panzer Dragoon Remake, which is on uh, PS4. Um, it was out on something last week as well, wasn't it? Uh, PC version, like, yeah, PC, just came up. Uh, so this is a rail shooter type thing. We did talk mm-hmm. about it last week, Liam, but re- remind us, what is it? Yep, it's a, another Ground Up remake, except this time of Panzer Dragoon from the Sega Saturn, which is a, an on-rail shooter where you play as a person flying on the back of a dragon through this like mystical fantasy land, and you shoot down sh- airships and missiles and all manner of other fantasy objects. Uh, it's quite a short game, from what I heard. Apparently, the re- it's like you can get through it in like two and a half hours or something. But you could with the original anyway. But it's like, so it's not like there's no expanded content or anything. It's literally just a pure visual mechanical overhaul of the original. Okay, um, Spelunky Two is out on the 29th, which is Tuesday. It's out on uh, PC platformer roguelike. Again, we did talk about this. Uh, I think it yeah. was last week. It's a, um, it's, a, it's a must if you uh, played Spelunky 1 and enjoyed it. It just it expands on every single good thing about the game whilst making no missteps. Um, but if you aren't familiar with Spelunky 2 at all, probably get the first game. You can probably pick it up for about £1 uh, and that way you don't have to spend however much this fucking game is. How much is it? 16 quid or something? Probably. Um yeah. Umihara Kawase Bazooka uh, is out on the same day, the 29th, uh, which is a Tuesday. 
uh, on Nintendo Switch and PS4. Um, don't know what it is, but it's got a good name. Um, October the 1st, which is Thursday, you've got Super Mario Brothers 35 out on Nintendo Switch, so kind of back to the Battle Royale type thing. Is it 2D? Have I made that? No, it's it, it's you, you're not wrong. Like it is right. Yeah, sorry. I said I, cause I thought you said if I got that wrong, that's why I said. No. But what I actually meant to say was yes, it is 2D, Mike. Yeah, yes. uh, but this is the original. Like, so I just looked at the trailer before, and it looks really yeah. cool. So how Tetris 99 is a battle royale in the sense that you and 99 other people play Tetris and then, you know, you all get eliminated. Well, this yeah. is like Super Mario Bros., the old school one, like the NES one. Um, but there's like a countdown timer and you get points. You, you get seconds for like, I don't know, jumping on a Koopa Trooper will give you three seconds. Hitting the shell into something like a Goomba will give you five seconds. Hit, you know, getting a mushroom will give you whatever in it. So, um, uh basically it it's like that and it's like whoever can get the furthest without their time running out uh, cool. will be the winner so i don't know if it's like randomly generated levels but from the looks of it when on on the, on the trailer there were people playing lots of different looking areas and i'm quite familiar with the original and that I, I can't really remember that so yeah, I, yeah. I don't know if it's a bit of a mario maker kind of the computers generated it but mm-hmm. that's um I guess the interesting thing is, like Tetris 99, this is a game that is just for people who have got Nintendo Switch online, right? Yeah. Um, and it's a, cool, it's a cool way of, uh, you know, making it relevant again, isn't it? like reinventing the genre a little bit um, just by just by changing the rules and making it a competition, which, which is cool. Yeah. Um, and then on the Friday, October the 2nd, you've got a couple of big games. Crash Bandicoot 4, It's About Time, which is out on PS4 and Xbox One. Um, it's a good name, that, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. About Time. I like that. Because it's about name. time travel, and it's about yeah. time for the sequel. And yeah. I don't think, I don't think uh, you know, that would only work on Crash Bandicoot or Ratchet and Clank or something like that. It's, mm-hmm. it's, uh, it's a good, appropriate uh, thing. It, lo- it looks pretty cool. It looks like a, yeah. it's a brand new Crash Bandicoot game, so... Mm-hmm. It's doing that recent trend of like reboot things where it completely ignores all the Crash games past uh, the original three and it's like a yeah. direct continuation. So, you know, like the recent Halloween film was like everything yeah. past Halloween 1, forget about it. I watched that last night. That's Terminator. I'm going to watch that tonight as well. It's on Netflix. It's a good film. Uh, Terminator did that as well, didn't it? Yeah. Just forget all the Terminator films. This is the one that you want. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but apparently people didn't want that either. But then, yeah, um, they're doing that, but for Crash. What's going to get it or what? No. Uh, I, cause it's a full price game, this. So I don't know why that really puts me off. It's a full fat 50 quid, this. And for some yeah. reason, that doesn't sit right with me. I don't know why. Which, re- which remember, is an X-Gen bargain. It's an X-Gen <laughs> bargain, yeah. But it's uh, it's just something like, I think maybe it's because Insane Trilogy and the Spyro Reignited Trilogy were both 30 quid each yeah, and included yeah. three games that I might, mean, you know, like, I know that's not fair to the Crash 4, which is a completely brand new game, original, you know, no, no, no. fresh. Yeah, but, um, I, I, think, I think a lot of people will be thinking the same way as you're thinking. I yeah. have that mentality. But I'm paying that much, well, for a fucking 2D platformer. Yeah. But... 3d but it still has that same mentality like, there's something about it that seems like so we'll see i'll, Maybe, yeah. I'll I, I think i'll get it by the way i think i'll for, what i'll do is i'll probably wait for the pc version because i can't i played crash and spyro on the ps4 the trilogies and then they came to the pc like a couple months later not only were they cheaper they also played far better as well like i had to higher frame rate better textures and everything and Activision's yeah. got this thing lately of we'll put them on the consoles, then we'll bring them to PC like six months after. Yeah. So I'll probably yeah. wait for it in case it does come to PC. Or hell, even PS5, you know, because it'll probably be on that at some point as well. Yeah, 90 quid. Um, 90 quid. So Star Wars Squadrons is out on Friday as well. Um, PC, PS4, Xbox One, Space Combat Game by EA. That's right, you heard that right. That's a new Star Wars game. That hasn't happened before mm-hmm. by EA. Um, it's not, it. a mobile, not a mobile game. Uh, it's not an app. Yep. It's a fucking console and PC game, uh, mm-hmm. which is cool. And a flight uh, summit, that. 
Yeah, uh, I, I think I'm going to get this. I think I'm going to get it. Uh, yeah. It looks cool. I've, I like. Did you see the little short that they did? The like, mm, they did yeah. like a six minute, um, you know. Yeah, like CGI teaser thing. It was cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm into that kind of marketing. I like that kind of um, you know five minute short corporate short film as a yeah. as a as a marketing tool is pretty cool. Like, uh, yes, Star Wars Squadrons is. Uh, I. I, th- I think it's, it's, there's been a big call for a game like this, hasn't there, for, yeah. well, for years yeah. and years and years, really. Mm. It seems so odd that they're doing it. At the end of the gen. Uh, at the end of the gen, yeah. So uh, yeah. you think you might get it, Mike? Yeah, but possibly. I, th- I think it, c- it could have been a, just a pretty cool um, launch launch title, really, couldn't mm. it, for next gen and, and whatever. But Yeah, yeah, yeah. To be, to be honest, like... Yeah, and they could have put a bump, on, a bump up on the graphics, and EA could have charged fucking loads of money for it. To be yeah. honest, mm-hmm. uh, well, I know. So, so I was gonna say, this is another. It's like Mafia, not full price game. It's like thirty five quid. This, yeah, but it's meant yeah. to be. It's meant to be like a bit shorter than a, like your normal AAA game. Yeah, your normal EA Star Wars game, which is again about four hours, like mm-hmm. Star Wars Battlefront Two. Yeah. The campaign on that thing was fucking short as fuck. But this mm-hmm. this has got multiplayer, has it? Yeah, it's. Uh, I it's, think it's, it's just that, isn't it? It's got a campaign. It's got multiplayer where you do like, uh, what is it? It's like a mix of. I think there's like, uh, what is it? It's like you there's a mode where you attack, like a uh, capital ships and frigates, and it's the first team to. It's like a tug of war, sort of like one team goes on the offensive, but then the other defending team can push them back and then go on the offensive themselves. Is, to start. It, is it a bit like in in Battlefront? Like there's those bit, specific yeah. um, like dogfight modes. But the first one, bit, yeah. the first Battlefront, well, not the very first one, but like the 2015 one, had that when it was mm-hmm. like you had your you you took it in terms of attacking and defending, yeah. and it was a big ship. So, mm-hmm. But I don't think that was in the second Battlefront. But I, it sounds like that. Yeah, and uh, and then it's just like yeah, your normal deathmatch type mode where you split into teams, taking out other people. From what I know, uh, yeah, yeah, but it looks good. Like, and I'm excited to see something that's not Battlefront from the Star Wars EA. And yeah, yeah. you know, because like I didn't think Jedi Fallen Order was that great. I liked it. I thought it was a decent game, but Same. you know, it's exciting to see EA actually start making some more original games rather than just. Let's make another Battlefront. Yeah, uh, yeah. I've gen- Fallen Order had the whiff of uh, short-term kind of mm. fix about it somehow for me. I feel, I feel like they'd it had only been. I'm uh, probably completely wrong, but it just just the whole. It just felt like it had only had a couple of years, maybe or something, and it just felt like a quick game. So I don't know. How, I don't know if you know what I mean, but it just. It I, just know, felt I like, know exactly what you mean. Yeah. Um, it so felt, so it felt like they saw the reaction to Battlefront Two and was like. Quick, who's our most beloved studio? Respawn. Yeah. What do people want? Yeah. Lightsaber combat. What do people like? Souls like combat. Go, Respawn, go. Yeah, um, die. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, so, yeah, who knows? This this could be cool. Uh, a new Star Wars game from EA, who knew? Um, so thanks, everyone, for uh, writing in. Um, keep doing that, please. The address is dspressalmoves at gmail.com. Um, thanks everyone who supports us on Patreon. Remember to keep looking out on our Patreon feed for a new bonus podcast uh, every uh, couple of weeks or so. And uh, we'll see you again next week with some more stuff, probably. Goodbye. Bye.